Mustang. Going to do a work on the rear brakes again today. It's a beautiful sunny day here in central Mississippi. Highs close to the 60s. Uh, love living in the south. But uh, got a couple things we're going to share and uh, show you how to do on these rear brakes. We're going to do wheel cylinder replacement and uh, start installing the rear shoes and getting it all, uh, start getting this rear the rear brakes ready to come back together. So uh, y'all follow along and uh, we'll get into it. Okay, we're back. I uh, want to take a look at the uh, contact pads where the uh, brake shoes actually contact the back in place. You see those uh, shiny spots right in here, right in here. You want to make sure that those are dressed smooth. You don't, because uh, if, they're, if they're not, if they've got burrs or if they've got wear marks in them, they'll cause brake shoes to hang and not perform properly. So what you want to do is you want to take something, you can either do it by hand, it may take a little while, or you can do it with a, like this row lock and a, and a buffing pad, and you can scuff them back smooth. Uh, you don't want to get carried away because you don't want to cut a hole in your backing plate. You just want to dress them up so that they're smooth. When we actually put the brake shoes back on, we'll put a little bitty uh, light coat of uh, uh, brake grease on there so that the uh, shoes slide and uh, retract like they're supposed to. Okay, now we've got these, uh, these pads buffed and smoothed down a little bit. We're going to put a new wheel cylinder on. Uh, these wheel cylinders back here were not leaking, uh, but we don't know exactly how old they are. Um, and I don't want to take a chance doing all this work and then having it, having it ruined and have to do it over again. It's better just to start new, and that way we know exactly what we've got and when it was replaced and go from there. They do make kits for these. Uh, if you're so inclined, you can hone them out and uh, put new cups in them and uh, new end rubbers. It's not uh, it's not a bad idea to do that as long as they aren't pitted in bad shape. But uh, we just bought new ones. We got a good deal on them. Wagner brand for, I think we paid $6 a piece for them or something along that line. So by the time you factor in your labor and all that, you can just get a, a set of new ones or rebuilt ones relatively inexpensive. But to get these off, you're going to need the uh, brake line itself. It's 3 8 inch, and the uh, bolts that uh, hold it on are 7 16 Now, a lot of times, uh, these brake lines, if they haven't been, uh, if somebody took them apart before, wasn't real careful, didn't have the right size wrench or whatever, got ham-handed with them, they can uh, round the corners off, and you have a hard time getting the lines back off. And in that case, you bring out the old vice grips. Uh, this side I've already checked out in uh, prior uh, little post video, uh, pre video inspection, and uh, they're going to come apart okay, it looks like. I'll give you a quick tip on that. When you put your wrench on the brake line, a lot of times they don't want to break loose. If they haven't been apart for 20 years or whatever, the car's been sitting, could be rusted in place, it's just they get, they get stiff. What you do is you put the uh, uh, put your wrench on it and actually go in the direction of what would be tightened. You try to get it to tighten just a little bit. If you can just get it to crack just a little bit, and then when you go to go to loosen, it'll go ahead and loosen up. For whatever reason, I don't know why, but that always seems to work. Um, so uh, you can get you a drip pan put underneath there because you're going to be leaking fluid everywhere. If it's an active car and you got brake master cylinder, so uh, pretty straightforward here. If you know nut, how to do nuts and bolts and take stuff apart, this is a uh, pretty straightforward. Um, you just just undo everything, get your new part, and mount it up. And uh, we'll get into the bleeding procedure and all that other stuff later. Okay, we've got the old wheel cylinder off. We're getting ready to put the new one on. Now, when you take the old one off, you need to be careful with your brake line. You don't want to bend it because uh, you want to be able to try to. You need to try not to bend it because if you bend it, you won't be able to get it lined back up correctly with the, the new part. Uh, when you go to put it back on, 
you put the new wheel cylinder up in there and you leave the bolts out of it for right now and you go ahead and you manipulate it around and you start your line until you can thread it up in there by hand. Uh, you do not put your bolts in it yet because if you do, you won't be able to wiggle it around and get the line started. Never, ever, ever start the line, start, get the line started and put a wrench on it until you, until you know that it is threaded up in there good. Because if you try to put a wrench on it and force it, it'll cross thread, it'll leak, and you're going to end up replacing your line. Uh, no two ways about it. We uh, had to take the bleeder screw out. The bleeder screw on this one was a little bit longer. It didn't want to fit. So I uh, pulled the bleeder screw out. I'm going to hook everything back up, and then I'll reinstall the bleeder screw. I'm just going to go ahead and put, these, put the bolts back in there. tighten it up. The other thing I wanted to show you is I, I did forget, I forgot I had one here at the house. Uh, I actually have uh, the correct the correct line wrenches to do this. Uh, they, uh, they're not that expensive. You can go to the parts store and get you some, but uh, you can get some line wrenches. See, I had a regular 3 8 wrench, and uh, it's good to have one of those because once you get it broke free, you can use the open end to sit and turn and walk it off. But the, uh, the line wrench will get will give you uh, five contact points or four contact points at least. Let's see how many of this one. One, two, three. Yeah, it's at least four contact points on this wrench, whereas this one will give you just two. So that will help keep you from rounding off your uh, your line. Um, and I've got yeah, coming all kinds of different sizes. They go all the way up to lines that big around. Okay, it's time to start getting ready to put the shoes on. Uh, just make a couple of quick important notes here. The uh, one thing you need to pay attention to is when you first get your shoes out, get one of your old ones and make sure you lay them up side by side. Make sure they have all the same holes, same cutouts, and the same um, places for mountings. Uh, you don't want to get in there about halfway into the job and find out that the, that you have a different model of brake shoe and then that they won't work. Uh, next thing you need to keep in mind is that there are, in, on the drum brakes, is you have two different lengths of shoes on the material. And then see if you can see, you have a short side and a long side. The long side always goes to the back. Okay, here's all the technical difficulties and that, and we had to go get a cup of coffee. Uh, switch cameras, run out of storage. But okay, we're back finally. Uh, as I was saying earlier, long shoe always goes on the back. First thing you're going to do when you install these shoes is you have your part brake lever, install it in the shoe. special little keeper slide up in there and you take your pair of pliers and mash it down so that it holds the part brake lever in place okay now that you've got your uh, parking brake cam hooked on there and take and get you some uh, High temp brake grease. And you just want to put a little smear, not a lot, just a little dab on these points right here on your contact points that you cleaned up earlier. Doesn't take a lot. You don't want this stuff running off and getting on your uh, brake material itself, so you want to be sparing with this. You just want it to be so that your brake shoes will apply smooth and release smoothly. That's it. Just a little dab of do. You don't want to get carried away. Okay, now that you've got your grease on, take your anchor pin, put it through, line it up with your shoe, start lining your shoe up, put your anchor spring and your cap and the uh, cap. Easier said than done, one-handed. 
Alright, line it up in your tool. Alright, just take it on, pay attention to how your pin's in there, and turn it 90 degrees, and there you go. That'll hold your shoe on. Now, long shoe on the back, short shoe on the front. Now, take your anchor pin, stick through, get your spring and your, your next cap. And you'll go ahead, line your shoe up, install it. Turn your cap 90 degrees and it locks it in place. Alright, now that you got your uh, brake shoes held, starting to be held in place, you can take your park brake plate and it slides in here and it goes on the park brake, emergency brake arm. And you can line your, take, put your shoe back up there, start getting them to hold it in place. You're going to take your, uh, any retainer springs, go on the top. Make sure you start hanging your other stuff in here too. You got some other stuff that's got to go in as well. There it is. I can't go like that. There we go. It's in the right order. If you want to get that on there, where you can just start hanging your spring. All right. Once you get your retainer plate there on the top, you got your uh, self-adjuster cable installed on there you take your first spring this is where uh these special tools that we had will come in extra handy and make life a lot easier you take slide that spring right on no issue at all now you've got piece that the uh, cable runs around for your self adjuster spring actually helps retain it so you actually oh, here we go. come on I'm hold my mouth right there we go all right you should put it in the hole run your spring in in the right direction make sure that your spark brake plate is still in place get it pulled up there your screen tool slip in there and there you go but make sure that your cables on the correct side don't be a nimrod like I just was it's not that big a deal, but it's a lot easier if you do it right to start with. Get out of there. Alright, make sure your shoes are pushed up all the way at the top. And you start routing your cable across the cam there. Now you get your, your self adjuster hooks right there and right there and you're gonna have a spring that holds it in at the bottom. Now let's get your self adjuster out here and let's take a look at it. I took and cleaned all this stuff up. You wanna make sure that it turns really free. You don't want it to be any bind on it because the shoes won't adjust correctly. Alright. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take and get a little anti-seize lubricant and put on these parts so that they continue to turn free. Okay, we've got our anti-seize 
on our threads and up here on the pivot. Uh, just be careful with any seeds. One little, you don't need a lot. Uh, one drop on your hand, and you'll have it all over you from head to foot. You want to make sure that you drop your, put your uh, adjuster in in the correct position. Down here and look. If you'll look, you'll, you'll see that it has a window opening for it. Pushed up there. You got your self adjuster piece in there. And you've got a spring. That runs there up to your self adjuster. You have to hold it in place. Do this one. Okay, self adjuster spring take two. I'll try some needle nose pliers. You know, sometimes things can be a little aggravating, but with a little perseverance, there you go. He hooked up. You sure everything's routed as it's supposed to be? Everything's pushed up like it's supposed to be? A little bump, make sure it's all settled in. Okay. Take, make sure our drum will slip on. Okay, it slips on, but now what? I'm done, right? No, you're not done. You want to adjust your adjuster wheel. Crank it out and recheck. What you want, you want to be able to adjust the shoes out until they just contact the drum. If you don't, your self adjusters won't work. This may take a little bit, but just keep doing it until you're. Till your shoes just barely contact and start contacting the drum. There we go. Brake shoes are just contacting the drum. This side is done. Now you do the reverse on the other side. I say reverse because everything is a mirror image from one side to the other. But the procedure is exactly the same. And that is 67 Mustang brakes with the four bolt lug pattern. Okay, uh, we were done with the brake job and showing you how to, how to get them installed. But uh, tearing down the other side, it came into a little problem. And I wanted to uh, go over and give you a little advice on how to handle a situation like this. Took the when I started tearing down the, all the other components and started inspecting them, the um, star wheel brake adjuster is locked up, uh, will not turn. I mean, it's seized. I mean, solid. So what you can do is you can get on these particular and most of the ones I've seen brake adjusters. They have a little hole at one end of it, and you can take and put a little penetrating oil, squirt a little penetrating oil, let it run down inside. This this particular brand, PB Blaster, has got a, gives you a pretty good pin stream. Some of it comes with a straw if you can get it in, to go down in that hole and uh, let it start uh, working down in the uh, around the threads. Then what you can do is take a, uh, you get a ball peen hammer, and you can take another hammer. I don't have another ball peen handy, but just take another hammer to back it up. Hold a hammer on one side and just tap on the other, and knock it out of your vise like that. And I don't want to get too tight because I don't want to booger up my uh, star wheel. But you can just take. 
Okay. And that uh, the tapping vibrates it and helps your uh, penetrating oil work down inside. Look at that. Just that little bit tapping and some penetrating oil freed it up. Now, I have had them seized so tight and uh, with rust that uh, tapping wouldn't, uh, wouldn't free it up. And what you can do, clean some of this blaster off there, is you can get you a, just a little small propane torch like this. And just take Make sure that you don't have anything on your benches or around that can catch fire. And you just take it and just gently heat around the body of the adjuster. Just move it around, move the torch around. Like I said, again, you want to make sure that you don't have any flammables around. Or any, or, uh, any combustible material. And you can probably see that it's starting to smoke. And there it goes. That's why you don't want to have any combustible materials around. Another thing that I have off camera. Always have a good fire extinguisher handy. Fully charged and ready to go. Safety first, guys. Once you've uh, put the torch on it, though, you let it, you can just let it sit until it cools off a little bit. Until you can handle it uh, again by hand. And uh, once you uh, let it cool off most of the time, tap on it again with a hammer, and it will free up. Um, should you find that these parts are uh, so seized that you can't get them apart, they sell hardware kits. Bright hardware kits complete all day long. Um, you can get them at most any auto parts store. And there's lots and lots of resources online. So it's not a big deal. But like I said, safety first, fire extinguisher. Make sure you don't have anything combustible around and no flammable liquids.